Okay, today we're going to talk about Pocket Wizard Flex Mini TT1. What this allows you to do is high speed sync. This one's for Canon. It costs $199. Uh, it's a little receiver, it's got a hot shoe on the top. Uh, you have to pop a battery in it. Comes with a little coin, side, coin uh, battery. It's a uh, CR, see here, it's a CR2450. Um, these little transmitters do quite a bit, but as I'm going to show you, if you want to do high speed sync or they call it hyper sync with Pocket Wizard, and what that is is it uses a technology that lets you time to the flash duration uh, with a Canon 7D. The way this works isn't, in my opinion, um, the best way to do it. It comes with a USB cord, it comes with a manual, it comes with a FCC warning, and it comes with a extended warranty card. All right, for two hundred dollars, you're going to uh, if you buy a Flex TT5, you can plug your Canon Speedlight in and it's TTL and HyperSync and it does all the great things that your flash would do if it was hooked to your camera. So let's plug in this little battery. I'll show you how this works. Uh, basically, I'm going to show you how to HyperSync your studio lights and your speed lights with a TT1. You don't need a Flex 5. So you put your battery in. Okay, and then you have C1, C2. You need to download and upgrade to the latest version of the firmware. It's 6.1 and that allows you to adjust the timings on the actual transmitter itself. You can teach it different signals. Example for a, a, a multi-max, or if I want to teach it a transmitter signal from a plus one, or pluses, I should say, not plus one, but a plus. This one's a receiver, but uh, here's a transmitter. These are some of the original ones. Pocket Wizard pluses. So uh, you have to teach it. Actually, you don't have to teach it, but you can teach it the signal. Um, there's a learn mode on it. So today, since I did my Olympus high speed sync hack with uh, Buzz, today we're going to use Woody. Anyways, here's my 7D over here. We'll just put that on. Okay, and then over here we have a uh, Nikon SB80 DX, and we're going to use a Pot Wizard Plus to trigger that. Um, we'll just turn it on, go into manual mode, turn on the receivers. Okay, they say they want you to be in full power when you take your shot, because uh, that gives you the longest duration. Well, depending on what you're doing with the speed light, you may or may not want to be at high power. Uh, one of the main reasons why I want to use it is to use my studio strobes, which is my 805 package right over here. I'll show that to you in a minute. I want to be able to shoot, you know, at shutter speeds that will control ambient or knock down sunlight, and I want to overpower it with flash. I also want to be able to stop things that in motion. You know, I want to shoot at 4,000 or 8,000, so whatever I want to do, but I don't want banding in my image. So let's take an image of something with the uh, banding in it, and I'll show you what this particular uh, unit will do. Let's turn this off and put on a regular transmitter, and I'll show you what happens when you take a picture. Let me set this up. Let's bring this up so you can see it a little better. Okay. I'm going to slide over here. I don't know I'm going to be on the way. And I'll post the images in the video. We're going to go into manual mode. ISO 100. And I'll just shoot wide open at F28. There's 8,000. Well, auto focus, turn the stabilizer off. I'm shooting on a white background so I can get the uh, frame. So whenever you use a Nikon, they'll go to sleep on you. So you want to just wake them up. Okay, so we woke it up. Um, so we'll take our first shot. This one's going to be at, let's just go above the sync speed. First shot, 250, sync speed. Okay, so we've completely blown Woody out. Um, so now if we try to shoot, say, at 2500, we're going to get a black line. Well, this whole screen is black. Okay, so let's just go down to five, eight, 500. You see the big band? Okay. This is because we're not in sync, okay? So we're going to slip this off, and we'll put on the Flex TT1. And uh, I programmed this guy already, and uh, I've got it to where it will work with my Speedotron, but it definitely works with the speed lights. So we'll go to C1. Tighten this down a little bit. There's a C1, C2. Those are both uh, configurations, or channel 1, channel 2. And when you're in the software, you can control what C1 does or C2. So I could set up C1 to run my speed lights, and C2 could be for my studio lights. That's one way I could configure it. So I'm going to wake up my flash, in okay, case so my flash is awake. And we'll take a shot at 1500. And you can see there's no banding, okay? But we are definitely blowing out, so let's stop down just so I'm not blowing out so you can see what's going on. F63, we still have smashed. I forgot where I was at. Okay, we're at 1500. Let's just go to F16, I know that's going to be closer. Okay, so there we are. As you can see in the frame, it's dark around the edges. Woody's really bright, but he's not too bad. You can see the hard shadow. Um, and again, I'll show you these pictures. So there's definitely one 500, but we're getting a lot of uh, vignetting in the scene. So let me stop back down, and let's go up to, say, 1250. 
There's 8, there's 1250. You see the banding start coming in? Okay, so let's go up some more. 2500. There's real, there's complete banding. Now we're on full power with the Nikon flash. So you can go into the software and you can adjust it so that we're synced, synced better with that flash. I'll bring the flash closer and banding. So we'll open up, I'll show you. They're back to F2.8. Still banding at the bottom. So we'll go to 1250. 1250 is pretty fast, right? Still some banding. So here's the situation. The way the Pocket Wizard works is with Canon, there's a pre-flash signal. That pre-flash signal is done with the first frame, the first shot that you take when you turn on the TT1. Then it uses that information that the camera sends up here to this little receiver, and it locks into a routine. Okay, so the first frame is like a dumb test frame. It doesn't use those settings. So you'll notice what happens when I say that a dumb test frame. So we turn it on. We'll take our shot. Okay, there's no banding in that particular shot. So our second shot, if we take it, you'll notice that there's start to come banding at the bottom of the screen. Well, that's the speed at which it's locked in at. That just continues to get worse. So you go back into the software and you adjust your settings because this is not high speed sync. This is Pocket Wizard's hyper sync. So what it's doing is it's using whatever the routine setup. You can have it automatically do it. You can set at which speed the shutter goes into hyper sync mode from HSS, which is high speed sync mode. Um, and then again, it uses the flash duration the tail end of it, and timing in microseconds when this is going to trigger in relationship to when your shutter opens. So that when the, the uh, shutter slit goes across the sensor, that it's going to receive light across it and not a big black line. However, if you just continue to go up, it's going to give you banding. So here's 2000, and you can see the bottom is black. So we'll go to C2, which is the same as turning it off. Just turn it off, go back to 1, and we'll take a shot. And this is the dumb frame. It's not as banding as much. Now we'll take the second frame. And you can see that the banding is real prolific. So you can adjust the timings to get the banding off, but you can't match your speed light with your studio strobe at the same time, right? So you'd go into C2 and make one for your strobe and one for your light, but depending on which power you have set at, you know, your power pack, whatever power that happens to be set at, which may be up or down, you have to go back into the software and adjust the timing on the pocket wizard so that you don't get banding, right? So they say, well, just use it at full power all the time and stop down and adjust your flash with the aperture, which is what you normally would do. What if I could show you a way to take your regular flash, your 430 EX2, or even a 220 EX2, and use that to put your camera in high-speed sync mode and trigger your studio strobes or your off-camera flash with a wireless trigger. It could be a made-in-China trigger, you know, one of the Yongos, or it could be Pocket Wizard. Um, and I'll show you how you do that. We're going to get rid of this thing altogether, this Flex TT piece of shit. Okay, we're going to take this off, and I'm going to set up a little thing, and I'm going to show you how we can get banding, get images with no banding, with our studio and our speed lights. So let me get set up and we'll be right back. Okay, here's my setup. We have 430 EX2 pointing straight up. Got a transmitter right there. And it's at 164th. And it's not going to contribute anything to the scene. And let's take a shot now and see what we come up with. We're at 1600th. 1600 at 4.5. Let's look at that. Let's see how much banding we got in there. Same speed we were with the Pocket Wizard. Flex TT1. I'm sorry for the crappy camera work, guys. Okay, there's the Flex TT1. I'm sorry, that's the 430X2. And let's go back. There was our banding issues. One two thousandth. One two thousandth. That was the uh, pre-learn, pre-flash. And then there was the learn pre-flash. So we're at 1600. I'm sorry, that was 2000 F8. So let's increase the shutter speed. Let's go back up to 2000. Okay, so there's 2000. This is no flex. 2045. So let's go to where we were before. It was at F8. F8. It's dark, but there's no banding. None at all in the whole frame. Okay. So let's keep going up. Let's open our lens back up because I'm going to go up to 8000. Okay, so there we are. There's the Flex 2000 F8 banding. Pre-flash. This is the learning. And like I said, I can adjust this down so it's there. But the second one will give me the banding at 2000 because my studio strobes, the Speedotron, it won't adjust to in the hypersync mode. I need to get an Ellen Chrome or I need to get a, you know, a Force 10 or something with a, a better duration. This is what Matt Group tells me. Okay, so let's open our lens back up to where we were. 4.5. And let's go on up to, say, 4000. 4,000th, 4, 4.5, no banding. So let's go up to 6,000. Let's go to 6,400. 6,400, no banding. 16,400 at 4.5, no banding at all. So let's go on up to 8,000. No banding 
at all. So let's open our lens up, regain some of the uh, light, but the shutter speed has knocked us down. It's hard to look at the camera and work backwards. So let's go to F28. F28. There we are. F28 at 8000. Now, I can't shoot 1 8000th with my Flex TT1, but I can definitely do it with a 430X2 and a Pocket Wizard. Oh, did you see that in the background? Look at that. That's the whole trick. It's using an optical slave. Okay? So if you could spend $10 on an optical slave, the right one, let me get you, I've been through a few, you could use this flash, a 220EX2. I know 220EX2s get purchased for a lot less than a uh, Flex TT1, and all you have to do is hit this right here, and you're in hypersync mode. You could take that whole front out and put in an optical slave and mount a little Chinese trigger on. Now you have hypersync mode, and you do it by putting your camera in high-speed sync mode via the flash. If you look at the corner, the little H, that's high-speed sync. It doesn't worry about using a pre-flash signal, and you can adjust your pack at whatever you want. So let's zoom back in. So let's dial the pack down. Let's bring the power down, and let's see what happens to our duration then. Let's see if it changes our duration. So let's wake everything up. Okay, it's awake. So I've cut the power pack in half. Okay, that was the dump. So we hit it again. So there's no banding. Do you see that? No banding at all. So I cut the power, so you don't have to be at full power to not get banding. Yes, I have to lower my shutter speed to 4,000 to pick up that stop. Actually, 6,400. That's a, let's see here, one... One, two, three. So there's 4,000. We should be, have the proper exposure. And there it is. Our exposure's back. We, we dialed the pack down to stop, and we had to get our light back with the stop. I mean, it's not an exact science, but the main thing is I don't have any banding. So let's drop the power pack down even further. Okay, so now we're two stops off of 800. Okay? So it's from 8 to 4 and from 4 to 2. So now we're at 200. And we'll test. We'll just dump it right now. Okay, so let's dump. And we'll take a shot. We lost our light again, so let's go down the stop. So we're at 2,000 instead of 4,000. Take a shot, and we have a similar result. But we have no banding. So when they say you have to have a certain light or buy this adapter for your uh, Ellen Chrome light or whatever, you don't. Let's use it with a speed light, okay? Let's put our Nikon back on. Okay, so I've got the Nikon back on. And I'll show you there's no hokey stuff going on here. Let's zoom out a little bit. Okay, I've got the Nikon back on, that's B80DX, and uh, let me show you there's no hokey stuff going on, so we'll just go ahead and test it. Okay, I don't know if you can see that go off, but it just went off. Uh, the red light comes on, so we know that it's powered, and let's take a shot at 1-8000. Okay, here we go. Let's zoom back in on the camera here a little bit. I'll try to keep them both in frame just so you can just see there's not anything going on. Okay, at 1-8000. Okay, now, you know, the size of the light is a lot smaller than a 50 inch, so we did lose, you know, the fall off different, the pattern of lights different, all that stuff, but we don't have banding. You see the hard shadow that it created because I got the light off to the right side of the subject and all these problems. There's no band, and we're at one eight thousandth f two eight. Okay, so I could you know do lots of things. I can move the light in. I can slow it down. I can do whatever I want. But here's the situation, folks. I don't have to go into any software and adjust a timer. I can just use an optical slave on top of my normal radio transmitter. It doesn't have to be Pocket Wizard. Okay, it's the slave doing the work. You know, if you have a four thirty ex two, if you have any flash that will put a camera in hypersync like a 220EX, right? I think I paid like $50 for this or $40 for this and put a piece of Velcro on top of there and put your Yongo flash on there and get a slave and stick it on there and you are set up to do off-camera flash, high-speed sync and is it a real effective way of uh, controlling your flash? Not particularly, but it's more effective than what the, the Flex TT1 HyperSync is. There's no first flash learning, there's no banding. There's no having to change frequencies based on my lights. I'm in high-speed sync mode, and I control the light. So let's take some more shots. Okay, let's wake this sucker up. All right, and let's let's go down, say, four, let's go to 4,000. Heck, let's go to 4,000, and let's stop the lens down a little bit. So we'll go to F4, let's go to 5.6, okay. F5.6, let's take a shot here. No, I'm not metering anything. I'm just hitting and hoping. Okay, so you see it's the same picture. So what do we want to do to make the picture better? Let's open up the lens a little bit. Okay, let's open it up some more. I'm starting to loosen that vignette. Let's bring the light in closer. Let's bring the light up. Let's point it down. 
the inverse square law is definitely at work here. It's falling off and it's vignetting my frame. So I'm just going to peek in there and see. Okay. Let's take another shot. So Woody's starting to uh, blow out. So stop the lens back down. Okay, now we're getting some fall off in the corners. But we have no banding. So let's zoom in on Woody and see what he looks like. So now we need a bigger light source. Okay? That speed light's not big enough. But do we want to blow him out? Sure, we can blow him out at 4,000. Let's bring it up 2.8. Now Woody's blown out. Starting to get wrap off the background. You know, that whole side of his face is uh, lit up. So we need to make that modifier bigger. You know, that little front piece of the speed light so small, you know. Um, so I'm just, this isn't a test on lighting. This is a test on how to high speed sync your camera. So I figured out how to do a 7D and it's done with an optical slave. Let's back it off and I'll show you the exact setup. Now I sell these slaves. I sell them for around $15. You can email me and I'll send them to you. Um, let's turn this off, let's turn this off. Let's pull this flash off, okay? The way this is set up is like this. There's a female sink. Uh, flash Zebra wants like 20 bucks or something for these. I'll sell them to you for $5 less. How's that sound? Uh, mine come with a suction cup. The slave just sits in a suction cup like this. You slip the slave in, you're good to go. You stick that on a Vivitar 285. You can stick it on a 430 EX2, a 580 EX2. Uh, you can put it on whatever you want. It's set up to go out of the box. These are uh, some nice optical slaves. And you don't have to worry about the optical slave not working in sunlight because it's laying on top of the flash. So uh, does it look that great? No, it doesn't. I'd like to find a way to stuff a, an optical slave up inside the flash and then use my PC sync port that I installed right here to go to my transmitter. You know, I would like Pocket Wizard to work like this. You know, I don't know why it doesn't. You have to buy a flex system so you can get TTL. Piss on TTL. I don't care about TTL. I want to be able to take a picture at any shutter speed I want and I don't want fucking banding, right? It's taken me a long time to figure this out. I've invested a lot of time and money fucking with the TT1s and the flex system and I'm not going to buy a 580 EX2 and a Flex TT5 just so I can TTL high speed sync with no banding. I'm not going to spend $3,000 in transmitters and flash it when I can do it with an optical slave for $15. Come on guys. This is not brain surgery here. So I just showed you without any software, no firmware updates, nothing, how to shoot a Canon 7D in high speed sync at 1 8,000th of a second with no banding. There you have it.